Good evening. Hey, this is Jan from New York City. My channel name is Jan from New York City Saves Money. Welcome to part two of Grocery Savings Guaranteed to Work. And I love the arena of grocery savings because it is one of those aspects that we can actually have entire flexibility and entire control over our purchases. If we are just a little bit more mindful of how we do it and the methods that work for us and work for our families. And one of the things that's really an important and very important emphasis I want to get across to my listeners and to my viewers on my regular show. And of course, this is the nighttime version of me just to mention, because I'm on every Monday through Friday at 5 a.m. Eastern on video. Once in a while on a Friday, if I know I have to clean up my refrigerator and do housework, you'll catch me on a daytime version of an audio. But that's okay. It's all about the message. There you go. So let's get right into it because there are just like some things that we can easily avoid making a mistake, for example, by not counting what we have. Now, what do I mean by that? I am admittedly a bit of a bean counter, if you will. Even though I can't stand math, go figure. Don't ask me why. It's just one of those one of those weird things in life. But like, if I know, for example, I'm a family of one. If I know, for example, that uh, frankfurters or hot dogs, that there are eight frankfurters in the pack, and I know that usually I don't go past ever eating two. Many times I'll just have one because they don't desire like tons of it, for example. Just saying, just saying. But what I like to do, once the packet's open, I like to take two frankfurters, wrap them up as packets of two, put them away in the freezer. Because once you open them up and just keep them in the fridge, it doesn't take too long before they're not good. I was really surprised to learn that you need to use like Frankfurt is up like in less than, what is it, 10 days? It was like a short, short period of time once you open them up. I thought that kind of like lasted like a very long time, but that was my mistake. You can look that up easily. In fact, maybe in the future, I'll do a show about that, like how long certain uh, foods last. Some things are shorter of duration than others. And the thing is, we all want to avoid food waste. So be a bit of a bean counter. I know ahead of time, for example, something like a dozen eggs. Well, uh, let's think about it. Not too much of a genius, right? All of us to figure out what is a dozen. Of course, a dozen is 12. So you know you're working with 12 eggs. So, okay. So really the method is this. Here's the method in a nutshell. Know your inventory. Check your inventory be on top of it so you don't a avoid food waste or run low run short or run out you don't want to do that let's talk a minute about frozen foods even the frozen foods that we manufacture now the argument may come up with oh well what if you you know, fill up your freezer and then there's a power outage it is a valid question it is a valid question and unfortunately sometimes in life we cannot predict when a power failure is going to occur. But what are we going to do? Never freeze our food? I mean, we all have to realistically freeze our food at some point or another. Am I right or am I right? There are things you can do to prolong it. For example, if the power outage is less than X number of hours, the frozen food remains safe. But that's, that's for another show. But don't be afraid to freeze food like, for example, if you use your refrigerator freezer, the kind that comes with your refrigerator, I'm not talking about those deep freezers that people keep in their basements or whatever. I'm not I'm talking about regular people that use regular refrigerators with regular freezer that comes with the, with the uh, refrigerator. Okay. To, all right, to fill that up, even if there is a significant power outage, that leaves you, you know, stranded for X number of days. You got to take that chance because more likely than not, you will not have the power outage more likely than not. So you still have to weigh the pros and the cons, but you also have to live your life. 
So getting back to the grocery shopping methods. To me, and I'll say it again, and I'll always say it, I've been saying it for years, food in the freezer is money in the bank. Just like I feel really good to know with my you know, little growing stockpile in my pantry, for example, as I watch it grow, yes, there are times I get into it because I'm rotating it, and there are times that I don't feel like going to the grocery store or ordering something from the grocery store, and I will go into it. But I like knowing it is there. The same feeling should be, in my opinion, and has done so worked for me over these years. Let's say I like to take, I'm just using this as an example. Let's say I like to take the beginning of the month to stock up my freezer for the month. The one, the freezer that, like I said before, that's attached to the refrigerator. I'm not talking about a deep freezer in the basement. <clears throat> if I want to stock that up, for the month forget about it for example i don't mind buying those manager special family packs i will get that thing home immediately i will sit down i will divide it up if there are eight boneless uh, chicken breasts i will butterfly them i will maximize that to death okay that's what i personally will do i will make as many chicken meat packages out of that as possible. And I will work with that accordingly. So this is where the quantity part comes in. This is where like, for example, making a roast chicken in its whole entirety, or making a, you know, um, pot roast, for example, which you could do easily in the slow cooker. And even if you're afraid, some people are afraid to roast things. And it's kind of sad because you're losing out, you're losing out and saving on saving money. You could buy a cheap chuck roast, for example, and turn it into, as I call it, the flavor and the uh, texture of like a filet mignon. Honestly, you could have that thing going on in your slow cooker while you're living your life, either working from home or cleaning out your refrigerator or whatever else you decide to do that day. I love things that I can multitask and I could do. And these things, pound for pound, can really, really be a budget stretcher and a money saver at the grocery store. And not only that, think about something, for example. One, let's say one pot roast, just using this as an example. Let's say you make a Yankee pot roast in your slow cooker, right? Just think about how many less messes you have to clean up because you're doing this as like the one time only major mess. And the rest of it is just slice, dice, heat, eat. I mean, how easy is that? I'm just saying, just saying. So there really is a lot of flexibility that you can work with. In addition to that, I personally like to stuff my freezer to know that I have, let's say that there's a month. I look ahead to the month as well. Let's say that that month has 31 calendar days, okay? Usually every single pack of meat I take down, I will get two meals out of. If I have 30 packs of meat, that doesn't mean I'm using 30 packs of meat in that freezer. I'll be using 15 the entire month. I will get double trouble out of it in a good way, or I will decide to make a soup and a stew at with even like a third of it. I'm telling you, you just have to use your imagination and your creative cooking genius. You know, it's actually fun. It's actually fun. Make it a challenge. Find out, ask yourself, let's say that you have a hundred bucks. You're just trying to challenge. Nobody's putting a, anything in your back or putting you up against the wall to do it. You're taking a challenge for yourself, a self-challenge. Say, I want to see what it's like to live on $50 per week grocery spending, okay? To some people, it's actually very generous because they're so used to shopping the frugal way. To some people, that challenge sounds almost insurmountable. Keep in mind, not everyone is frugal, not everyone is experienced, and not everyone has the knowledge that it takes from time and experience because maybe they're just new at it, for example. So if this is you, make a game out of it. I can, I can actually suggest the following things to do. Check out the other many, many fantastic YouTube channels, for example, that show how people even do it with extremely low amounts of money. Oh, my word. It can be done. Well, listen, I hope that these tips have helped. They have been tried and true for me. And, uh, you know, the best experience, you know, as they say, experience is the best teacher. 
But I could tell you this, this teacher has had a lot of grocery experience in her 63 years of living. And I like to leave to leave to live frugally, easily and cheaply. And I'm passing this down to you. So I really hope it helps someone listening out there. In the meantime, this has been Jan from New York City. Thank you so much for listening. I really do appreciate everyone's time. And don't forget to come back in the future and also Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. Eastern for the video version of me. All right. Have an amazing, fantastic evening. And I'm going to close out the show. Be right back. Everyone take good care. Have a great night. See you again bright and early in the morning. Take good care. Good night.